The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. Eric's Family Barbecue has arrived and is simply the best barbecue in Arizona. Come satisfy your taste buds with meats that are smoked over mesquite wooden sides that are made with fresh ingredients and tons of love. They have the best, juiciest brisket, pulled pork, rib sausage, turkey, or everyone's favorite, the Pitmaster Sampler that includes all the meat and four sides, mac and cheese, potato salad, coleslaw, corn, or beans, yum. And for dessert, try some creamy banana pudding, amazing. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip, you won't be sorry. Dine in or take it to go, go to Eric's Family Barbecue bbq.com for more info arizona's most funniest morning show yeah exactly morning sickness i'm listening because i want to morning somebody you day thank you quite kindly there silence the voice uh, off we go wednesday morning rolling along and of course uh, i'm getting the emails about what we just talked about guy says uh well big pp says talking at movies He's our one of our militant black listeners. I talk at movies and you mother effers. Did you say militant? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I talk at movies and you mother effers chew popcorn with your mouth open. COVID is an old cold virus, and China added things to it. Close your goddamn mouth, Peckerwood. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Big PP. We'll try. I do believe that uh, if you were to go by race, white people chewed with their mouths open more often than black people do. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'd go with that. Yeah. And I can only say that based on the idea that I've only had. We're definitely more piggish. Yeah, I've only had meals with uh, black people who are, you know, cultured, decent, you cultured going? human beings. <laughs> yeah. But I have had Careful. meals. I've, well, because well, I've been around more white people. Right. And at Tony Roma's when I was there, it seemed like the white people tended to have the worst table ha- habits. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, like comparatively, like you'd have a few. Like it was very trashy. Watch a big family tear into a loaf of onion rings. Um, <laughs> yeah, it seemed like the people, that, like the black people, never left messes. But it's because white people are entitled in restaurants. I still think that uh, minorities take, or at least when I was there, took it as a, a night How out. How many nights did you ruin, John? You ruined their entire day. Well, I ruined many nights, but I mean, uh, I do remember that. And you know, uh, Mexicans and black people are known for having a lot of kids. They have babies that, <laughs> and they and never once did I clean up like loads of Cheerios and Spaghettios that were brought from home. That was a that was a very white thing. White women think that their kid can make any mess, and that the, the, the restaurant's supposed to be okay with. And it. that you Dump can bring half your pantry with oh. you. Yeah, and you can bring half of your stuff from home and just let him pour it all over the floor, crunch it up, mash it in his dumb mouth, make mush, spit it out. They don't. And that's a mob mentality thing because we definitely did it when Alex was young. Yeah, I don't know. But you're you're right. There's no need. He doesn't need yep. snacks on top of the food right. that we're buying him. Well, Big PP's right. Peckerwood, close your mouth. Chew with your mouth closed. <laughs> if you're one of those, pe- and how are you unaware of that? That you're a person who goes because you're you taught. Eat. You're taught initially that that was one of the big things. Don't you? With well, your you're taught. You, yeah. But you're talking about decent parents. In UA, you don't. Uh, but I'm talking after. Even if your parents didn't, you're right because you're <laughs> you grew up with class. So you know, there was no black people up in the UA anyway. Right? Well, I mean. they chewed with their mouth closed, or they were told to close their mouths. He's right. The UA, he never knew. He doesn't know, but he's right. Decent people raise their kids to chew with their mouth closed. But let's say that uh, you didn't get raised that way. At a certain age, you have to realize you do it. And you've heard enough. It's like, oh, chewing with your mouth open so great. Like nobody thinks that's a good thing. So there's got to be a way like when you're in your teens or 20s where you're like, am I one of those people? I'm always worried about that. Like, am It's I, definitely am I... noticeable at yeah. a table like if one person's really <laughs> chomping with their open. mouth yeah. open. It's but gross. I think somebody would have called you out after all these years, right. too. And you like, still dude, didn't do it. On. Yeah, you, I don't understand how an adult gets to the point where they chew with their mouth open. I think they just don't care. Just like... Yeah. How in the world picking, do you not care about that? Picking those in, in public. Oh, nose pickers. Talking, talking to you. Staring stop. right at you. <laughs> digging. Just stop <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, Daniel emails in and says, uh, about wrapping your wife with saran wrap. Do you get to wrap the head for sure? Because if that's true... <laughs> I could do it in 60 seconds. Well, you got to break it by two. I, th- I say if you're trying this, yes, definitely start with a head. Then take your time. Take your time with the rest of her body. Maybe just makes perfect. Maybe you don't get the world record. But you get, you know, a good skill out of it, and you learn, you know, for next time. Just wrap her head in there. Look, if it takes an hour after her head's wrapped to get the whole she body right, take, get it right. It could take a minute. A good skill? 
Sure. Concentration, patience, uh, you know, uh, meticulous attention to detail. That's skill. So I say wrap her head and then take your time learning the the craft. Maybe two hours pass, three hours pass, and you finally get it done. Like, you know what? It took me three hours, but this is a good wrap job. Of course, she's not with you anymore. And this is a great way. A good wrap job looks blue after it's done. (laughs) That's exactly right. (laughs) Hello, Twitter world. <laughs> it's yours, truly OJ. Hey, I have a good idea. Anybody wants to try to get rid of, rid of the wife right now, they should get into this saran wrap challenge. And you get her involved. You have her sign some papers saying, yeah, we're going to do the saran wrap challenge. And uh-oh, it looks like it took me about three days after I wrapped her head to get the body right. We didn't get an award, but she was in on it. So if you're looking to get rid of that wife of yours... It's a whole lot easier to clean up when she's already wrapped at the end. <laughs> One stop shop, I say. Maybe even, maybe even put her outside for a little bit so she kind of melts down. It's easier to carry. It's you have to be careful Dexter. when you break the seal with a knife. Make sure you poke the right. Well, I'm not. Right I'm Brady. I mean, <laughs> Brady. How do you do it, Juice? Nah, come on, man. Not according you to you. Dexter, want to do it. You Damn, Brady, You're trying to get <laughs> me in trouble, man. I'm just saying, if your wife's trouble, always start with the head. That's That's been my philosophy forever. It's like a first date. You don't get head on the first date. <laughs> Have a second. I'm not doing that. And wrap it. Oh, and then at the end, if it's just always wrap it. Start with the head. You were taught to always wrap your head. Always wrap your head and always start with the head. If the head isn't there, then you're not going to do nothing with it after that. <laughs> I just think that that's a great way to talk your wife into, you know, it's camaraderie. You can do that at home, Brady. You can have camaraderie. Yeah, I love it. And just you get together and you have a day together. Like we, we, play, we used to play board games. They would get along. And say, this is more fun. Hey, I got an idea. Let's try to break a world record. Then wrap that bitch's head up. <laughs> you still playing Hungry Hungry Hippos? I've been playing. Yeah, I like when, when you take a, a, a skeleton head of something and start smashing and other stuff. I like that, Brady, but just I just listen to the show. I had to come on by. I'm on my way to play a Papago. <laughs> all right, I'll fuck you. See you later, boys. I'm just, all right. OJ likes the idea. How bad can it be? He sold me. Yeah. Oh, he's, what does he need? Oh, I forgot to tell you all. Uh, close your mouths, Pecker Woods. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Wow. All right. He came back for a little advice for you. Pecker Woods. <laughs> always has wisdom. He's always got something to say. He's good. Uh, the Suns are uh, back at it tonight. And the uh, headline I just saw, uh, Clippers announced Kawhi Leonard's status for game six. Out. He's out. Whew. And then last night, Giannis Antetokounmpo <gasps> hyperextended oh. his knee in an ugly way. Come on, Suns. I know. <laughs> the door isn't just cracked. It's blown open. It, it was bad, and they're going to try to trot him out there with that bum knee. And if you've ever even hyperextended anything in your life, it's like you got noodles in your joint for about five days. So they'll put some Toradol in that. They'll put a wrap on it. But he's going to be running real light for a while, and I don't think he's going to have the explosive. Hey, Trey can Trey Young can sit a game. Yeah. Oh, you know they kicked the crap out of him last night because yep. that Bucks team looked like what do we do without him? Yep. And that, he is the catalyst for everything that happens. So now you know you're looking at Kawhi Leonard out. You beat the Nuggets without Murray. You beat uh, uh, the the Lakers without AD. It's all I, nobody cares. Five years from now, was, that was year everybody got hurt. So what? The Steelers have the two. The Cardinals too went to the Super Bowl the year Tom Brady's knee blew up, and nobody goes, "Well, that was your Tom Brady." So we might not. Own. Titans were really good that year. The Ravens were really good that year. The Steelers clearly were very good that year, and they got the trophy. Nobody says it. Nobody said 1981. I think it was the Dodgers uh, won the World Championship. Uh, they played like 31 games. They shouldn't even been in the playoffs the way they did it because uh, of the strike in the middle of the year. They took mm-hmm. your overall record should have been counted, and they took two halves. Otherwise, the Cincinnati Reds, I think, were the best team in baseball by like 12 games or the Cardinals or somebody. But they didn't even make the playoffs because you had to play two halves and win the division. And the Dodgers did it with average records. I don't remember who it was. might have been the Cardinals. But uh, nobody goes back and goes, oh, that was – you remember it. But it's like they still, they still counts. The banner still goes up. The city still goes crazy. But you got to get past this Clipper team because if the Clippers win tonight, I have a feeling that game seven is going to be really tough. And if the Clippers end up winning, they're winning the world championship. Oh, yeah. Because they're, they're not losing to a beat down – and they're going to get Kawhi Leonard back by then. 
you're not getting. The Clippers are going to, and you can't have L.A. win another one. Different team. No. Give us 48% shooting tonight. <laughs> no, you're We're not going to win. You're not going to win with that. <laughs> you're not going to do real well with that. Give me 53. That's the magic percentage tonight. 53 from the field, 35 from threes. That's what you need to win tonight. But no Kawhi, which is great. That's great news for the Suns because that guy – and Zubach still questionable. Good. Well, because hopefully Monty Williams has a game plan at that point to say, yeah. okay, now we know what to do without – because they were just flat-footed with uh, their, their different lineups without – Hopefully they uh, went through zone Ifika. defense all day yesterday. Yeah, just learning how to play that because yep. that, it kept them perimeter everything, and they just didn't drive through it. College, college is uh, – it's the simplicity of his zone. The pro zone is so different because you'll get a guy rogue man, and it's like Patrick Beverly just starts beating the tar out of somebody. The other guy or just Marcus Morris. They were yeah, posting they, up on Devin Booker Morris all game just, long. Well, that was Crazy. just that was that you know like, I could, yeah I couldn't no miss. That was an unbelievable game plan. I mean, they were just they were, the pawn the pawns and the pieces that were being moved by. It's what we need tonight. Tyloo. Yeah, you absolutely need to well, They just have to have a coach's other than plan. Booker and. Here's what you got to do. Not worry about what they do and go out and execute your game yep. plan. 53-35. That's what you need. You need the percentages right there for them to win. But with no Kawhi, and now Antetokounmpo is out. for, And they trotted him back out. I thought they were going to try to play him. Hey, did you see it? He, it I didn't it, see his it. His knee flamingoed. It, it, uh, he goes up, oh. and he went down in a hump, and he's just grabbing his knee. And you can see, okay, this isn't a flop. This is real. And uh, he went up for a rebound, landed uh, straight need, and another guy – Fell Bo into it, it and big time. Yeah, it just turned it into a bow and arrow. It was gross. But I don't see him coming back as far as, you know, the same. So the door just opened up. And the Suns, I think, they beat the crap out of Atlanta. I mean, Atlanta's interesting, but they're not. I think the Suns are a better team than Atlanta. The Milwaukee might be as good, if not better. Suns are better than Atlanta. And if Atlanta can beat a beaten up Bucks team, whew, I mean it's a double door Something's just waving going on in the with wind. Atlanta though, ah, eh, they can play. They're good, yeah. but they're not as good as the Suns or Clippers. I think they're the fourth best team in the in the that are that's left, and especially if Trey Young's hurt. This is interesting, but again, it's just unlock doors and windows to a championship for a team that can keep it together for more than. And Suns have been playing the best out of everybody. Up until the last, you know, this series they were going to lose a game or two. They got beat up in the last game. They haven't been shooting well. They're due. Tonight's, they're due to have a shooting night that just, they're knocking it down. Or is it the Clippers and their pressure? Or are the Clippers better? Clippers win tonight. Clippers win the series. But you're right, though, man. The local the local guys here just cannot get over the fact that, that they lost. That no, game. they're, well, and then they try to do it. But hold your heads up. I'm like, settle down. But I do think that there is a chicken little factor too. If the Clippers win tonight, yeah, and you think they'll drop? Yeah. I think they'll drop four. All the four pressure, in a row. all the pressure, goes right to the Suns. All of it. I mean, it'll be were they, three up, in a row. they were up. There'll they be three in a row because they were up three one. They went two one one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So they, yeah, and three in a row is a tough one too. They, they don't lose three in a row, but I don't see the Suns coming back to Game Seven. The Clipper team that just feels like we they, they, this would be the third straight series they did this. Fell 0-2 and then won it. So this might be just that, this is what we do. And then they come in confident and the Suns are gripping. It's going to be interesting. Tonight is the night you have to close this out. Then the chicken littles are right. Then the chicken littles start having reason to fear. It's because that is a full collapse. And you don't want to be remembered for that. Boy, that's going to cold water all over the fan base. If they, if they, but you know, tonight, tonight, close them out. Close these bitches out. You had your one game where the victim fought back and kind of got away from you, but you're still you got a firm grip on their clothes. Pull them back, put them in the corner, and do what you do to a victim. Finish them. That's it. Got to love it. Sports in the middle of July. See, and I like the basketball schedule too. And they're going to move it back again. I like the idea of it starting at Christmas and ending in the 4th of July. I like that. Instead of starting in like late October. Then you have one month, basically, then football starts. Yeah, well, right? even then you start talking about football in the yeah. middle. Of, you got the preseason coming up the week after the, uh, the championship game's seventh game schedule. So if, if the championship goes seven games, I think the last one is the 22nd of July. And usually right around my birthday is the first week of preseason. So you start talking football. for It's immediate. 
It's it's perfect bookends for uh, sports. I think it's brilliant. Past the uh, break, baseball starts heating up. Because who pays attention at all? So the first month and a half of basketball, you're in the heart of football season. Basketball, or not ba- this guy? Yeah, baseball is just ending, uh, and you're you know hockey gets going. Uh, hockey, the first half of hockey's boring. You, you started in January and ended in July. This has been great. There's nothing else to watch. And we're in the dog days of summer for baseball. This is the time yeah. that only true baseball fans care, or if you can go to a game, you'd, but otherwise, limp into the break oh. and hope your team. Yeah, makes a deal Either or two. Either makes a run yeah. or... Yeah, the run starts in the end of July. Yeah. That's when you're like, all right, we've positioned ourselves for a run. But I don't know. I like the schedule, and it doesn't seem like they're going to stick to it because they're starting already to talk. They're going to get November going, go back to the old way. Uh, we talked about this idiot yesterday, uh, Park Jimin, um, the 18 surgeries to be one of the BTK uh, singers for the Koreans. A British influencer who went 18 surgeries to look like a Korean because they identify as a Well, here we go. Came out yesterday and said, uh, here we go, yeah, cowboy. Here we go, cowboy. I told you this would happen when you let these start doing surgeries to look like other stuff. By the way, I'm doing a surgery to look more like Kurt Gowdy's son so people don't know who I am. <laughs> Trying to hide, Tommy? Trying to hide a little bit. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the influencer, Jimin, says that uh, since his announcement, he's being bullied and getting death threats on his Instagram from people, and he can't believe that it's almost all the left-wing people, the Democrat, the Republicans right. and the other people are being nice to him. That was, that was his claim. He said Republicans and people struggling with identity have been largely supportive. That's most of the attacks are coming from liberal whites. Now I believe this guy. Well, <laughs> here's my problem. The, uh, everybody, Republican, Democrat, <laughs> yeah. and, and people struggling, should be uh, telling this guy he's a f- lunatic. He's identified as a Korean for the last eight years. Now, that's the other thing we missed yesterday. What was he before that? English. Okay, but he did, what did he identify as? Because eight years ago, he decided he's Korean. It was, wait a minute. Did you yeah. say that yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. Eight, eight, eight years. years. Yeah. Uh, eight years. Played the, uh... yeah. Well, I guess 18 surgeries, you'd have to spread them out. Right, but... Eight years ago, he's like, I'm Korean enough to try this. And it was it I'm was not it Korean BTS enough. or was it uh, something else? I mean, it was BTS, was, it made. Yeah, that's, BTS that, that, wasn't around eight years ago. Well, BTS they were. was the thing that made him say, this has definitely got to be a thing. Yeah, like, but, now he wants to be a but singer. But it started eight years ago, so I was curious uh, what wow. was the influence then. It was Psy. He was a Gangnam Style back eight style. years ago. It to be moved on. Right. Yeah, it's like, I kind of like this guy. He's got me thinking. It made him Psy curious, we'll say. And then And then afterwards... He went full Korean, but he's shocked that he's not just uh, in a feather bed of compliments for being the world's craziest face. I think <laughs> he should be. I think that that should be what the internet is used for more. Is that when crazy freak shows try to get uh, sympathy and stuff, uh, they were bombarded. Now you have to be careful because the freak show line is is moving. Yeah. But this one, we can all agree is bananas and will never be accepted. We can't start accepting this because then, then then, everybody can be like a puppy or you can identify as like a tree. You're just an idiot. We got to start calling freaks freaks again. We got to start say, saying, all right, that's done. We used to be able done. to do that. Yeah, we got it. We used to that isolate guy them. that called himself a tree, there was a right. Brady Report story about that. Yeah, he thought he was a tree. It's yeah. like, okay, let's chop that Not guy Not like down. Tree Man from yeah. years ago. Well, the good thing there is- There was a, a woman tree. that fell in love with a tree. That's right. Yep. But I would like to chop that tree man down and just uh, use him for kindling someday and let him live his dream. Maybe ha- do a little addition on the house with some of his wood parts. But yeah, we used to isolate kids in another room at school if they were acting up. Like you've got to go to another room. You're not part of the. You're not part of the. They still situation. do that, and that's just not as much anymore. Right. Yeah, but I mean, it used to be like you used to know the used first to have day. the rubber room. First day of school, you'd look around the room and go, "That kid's going to be gone in two weeks." Jesse, the hyperactive boy with the cold sores, is going to be in another room in two weeks because every once in a while, right in the middle of a test, he goes, <laughs> "I can't have orange juice." What? <laughs> what? Shut up, dude. We're is in a that test. peanuts? John, John, John. Jesse, stop talking. Oh, he's got orange juice. I can't be near your orange juice. You got to get him out of here, lady. There's no reason he should be. He's going to have cold sore breakouts. We're all going to get it. That's a preemie. Okay, Jesse. Thanks. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> stop talking to me. You're going to get us both in trouble. How's a preemie and I can't have OJ? It makes me break out in sores. <laughs> Can I move? <laughs> 
So we all knew first day of school, and I'm Brad. If I'm offending you, that you didn't know because you were the one. <laughs> what do you mean first day of school? You always I was in special ed, right? You were the one. Everybody looked around and said, "This kid won't be here much longer." All these normal kids looked around the room and said, "That one's going to be in a special room before the end of September." I always got kicked out of class. Yeah. Did you? Oh, yeah. I was always getting kicked out. Zabrowski would always kick me out. What'd you do? Talking and just running my mouth like normal. (laughs) Yeah. I was always in Mr. Craig's room. Just yapping. (laughs) All right. All right. I don't need no English. Yeah. (laughs) Talking to himself. Look, I can talk. It's fine. I can talk. People get what I'm saying. You know what I'm talking about. I don't need no English talk (laughs) training. Occasionally, that laugh would come out. He (laughs) says something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Today we're going to learn Winnie the Pooh's best friend, Tigger. <laughs> I said Tigger, funny. Brett. I said Tigger. <laughs> Jesus. He's, we're going to put him in a special room. Go to Mr. Craig's. We had a kid uh, get in a car wreck and uh, disappeared for a couple weeks. And he came back to his regular schedule. And he wasn't quite right yet. And we all knew. Oh, he's, not regular he's, schedule. Yeah, he's not going to be the regular. He's, and then all of a sudden, uh, I think his name was Chris or Carl or something. He couldn't be in with us anymore. And he just stopped showing up. Because I noticed it when he came back that he'd lose attention and he just like because I, I sat behind him, and when he came back from his car wreck, I'm like, "Oh, it's good to have you back." Yeah, thanks. Cool. And then he'd just turn around and look at you for a few seconds and say something ridiculous, and like oh, thousand yard stare. Stuff's not. He's not really, uh, you know, processing stuff. There's the electrodes aren't firing properly. I have a buddy from high school and went to college, Alabama, head injury from motorcycle. Yeah. And he's, it's just enough where he's he's getting jobs and everything, but like sling blade about jobs. About four minutes into it, you realize something's not something, something clicking, right? And you just take uh, <laughs> AD, we call him, and go introduce him to someone else. Right? Oh, you push him off on another person. You see what right. happens? That's what everybody does? He wants to scratch the <laughs> humanity? Head yeah, because because he'll come up with a of some sort. He'll say something that's like what. You, can take, you get a timing light or something, this guy's not firing properly. <laughs> get this thing going a little bit because he's got two going at once. <laughs> you pass him off on another person for a joke? As an experiment, yeah. Right, to AD, see what he says. Check. AD, come here and talk to this lady in the fur coat. AD's a huge Suns fan out of Oh, Florida. is he? Yeah. Fly him in, Brady. Have him stay with the fam in the bitch barn. You guys can watch Disney movies and then go to a game. I heard from last week, he's like, Bar- Barkley has been shut down in these playoffs oh, so boy. far. He's not home. Like AD. He's not there. That's no good. But we never had a kid in class that turned and said, I identify as Korean. Shut up, Chad. <laughs> You're not Korean. I'm going to get a bunch of surgeries and become a Korean. See, okay. That's, That's when it changes. Not possible. All of a sudden, if back then, and the, the dude gets a couple of surgeries. Yeah. What is that? Uh, this is a good question. Like, you know those uh, DNA tests or whatever it is to find out where you are, where you're from? Yeah, to, like those yeah, came Toledo out with yeah, like 7% Asian or something. And Neanderthal. Asian, Neanderthal and Jew. Ashkenazi Jew. <laughs> he, was Jew <laughs> he was a Jew Neanderthal. Wait a minute. That's funny? <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah. Yeah. <laughs> Take it right Brett. past the cave, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make fun of the Jew. <laughs> That's not much you can make fun of cavemen. Sure there are. That's oh, ten yeah. times worse. Yeah. Fire. I've, yeah. Got, I've got more uh, more Neanderthal in me than 97% of the of the country. And that wasn't wow. uh, hard to... Really? I'm, I'm part well, of the 3%. Of size of that skull, though. That has to Your be it. Your cranium is... Has to be it. Definitely. Thanks, Dad. Well, <laughs> he didn't hear you. <laughs> Thank him all day. It's just shouting into the void. But yeah, so I mean, you know, you come back, but you can't, you would never come back like, because uh, it tells you you're a man too, right? Yeah. It says male. Yep. Neanderthal Everything. Jew. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to call you Neander Jew. It's a great nickname <laughs> for the radio, and it's confusing to the people over at Case. What the hell are they doing over there? We're going to need a New Jersey. Have you heard You'll the have cave to Jew? The, <laughs> give me that New Jersey. He's the a cave Jew. Jew. Neander Jew. Cave Jew. <laughs> <laughs> cave Jew. Not only did I invent the wheel, I sold it at a reasonable price. Ah, you got no shekels. You got no rocks. I'm not interested. I neandered you over there. I don't children. make, I sell. <laughs> All I want is a pelt. It's a fine pelt, huh? You like? I like. Anyway, so he comes back and neandered you. But you didn't, like, you didn't do surgery to change your face. You don't know. And then, the, well, maybe, and, but the DNA still coming back neandered you. You're not yes. ever going to be Korean. No. So I wonder if those people register with that. That's a good question to ask him because, like, if you identify as, and I know it's a brain thing, 
But if you identify as something you're not, like a Korean, your no. blood's going to tell you different. Can I identify as a Hasidic Jew, even because with my background? In a way, it's dangerous because if you get surgery to look like a Korean and you commit a crime and you leave blood behind and stuff, and we're looking for a white right on the DNA. Yeah. yeah. It's like changing your identity, like movies used to do it. Like, I don't know. His his face just looked more puffy than it did. Well, Asian. It's, it's, it's better for lineups. Well, he isn't healed yet. It would be, oh, yeah. he oh it's good oh, for Oh, was he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought that he's was not, still no, he's not right totally after. Healed. The puffiness is, is he's still got some time. Yeah, I thought that was right after surgery. Yeah, he's it's all the all the bruising is gone. The puffiness is still. Mm. Once they got all the rubber bands off and everything right. for the brain. <laughs> and well, and plus he's just all fired up, like because he's just running around his room. Light me up like dynamite! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> clang 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 clang! He's working on it. I wonder if he ever did that in the mirror, like when he was a kid, and just pulled his eyes apart and went, "Oh, all right." <laughs> Like, if he was ever racist to himself. Neander Jew. I like that. We could get him a jersey for you. Oh, next we're year. getting you one of those. <laughs> but you were Oshkosh, you were Oshkosh, Bagosh, and... I like that one, too. And, uh, and Cro-Magnon. But, yeah, that's the thing. Like, doesn't that matter anymore? Everybody says, follow the science, all this stuff, and if you don't listen to science, this is a thing. But isn't that it? Yeah, it doesn't, it, isn't if your body's saying it's this? Like you're not, you're, you're not Korean. You can't be if you're not Korean. It's like we always tease those girls who uh, always. In fact, I, who told me that the other day said that they were ten percent Cherokee. It was a man that told me that. It was one of the comedians, actually. Was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah it was. wasn't it? Oh, uh, it was, was it Trevino, Trevino, wasn't it? Yeah. And yeah. I said, "Oh, that's your cheekbones. Your cheekbones." And I'm ten percent Cherokee. I can say that. And I'm like, "No, it was the one before." Uh, was was, it was it with Pete? Oh, Lee? Pete, 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 oh, Lee. Pete. That's yeah, right. Pete, Pete Lee. Lee. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah, it's your cheekbones. You can tell. But that's what hot girls always say in the desert the southwest. I'm ten percent Cherokee. How do you know that? My ex girlfriend from thirty years ago, in high school, early college. I'm. I'm. Where did you learn that you're? Well, my mother's grandmother's. Um, husband's blah blah and she broke it down I'm like well that's not even you that's why marriage you didn't get any Cherokee in you there was a sack Indian yeah he was a Cherokee and that's why I have such high cheekbones hey John what did Toledo's DNA test say about Bigfoot because he hasn't been found either <laughs> well we did too find him Brady's DNA test came back so <laughs> I'm waiting for that the 23 and me to come back you're 22 for you <laughs> 21 and me for Brady do you do that as a 21 and me with uh, people who are mentally challenged yeah, you can find out your black twenty one and me. <laughs> find out where you come from, Corky. Twenty one and me. I wanted to know where I was from, and then go there. Five percent jelly bean. But my my dad is in the end a Jew, and he won't take me where my home's from. <laughs> I'm five percent jelly beans, two percent fire truck. All right, twenty one and me. <laughs> is it twenty three and me that? Tells you what you are, or is yes, that a yes, dating what site? I was on. That's yours. Yeah. Did it come back 21 and me, which would be hilarious if it just <laughs> it said, Neander, no, it said Neanderthal, Neanderthal <laughs> old-fashioned Jew, retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I love Neander Jew. It says, hey, pizza boy, Hanukkah doesn't start till November. No kidding. Yeah, no kidding, get it, dummy. Get it straight. Bert. Look, what a moron. Toledo, <laughs> Toledo just announced he's a, he's a Neander Jew, and he was telling him, I might not see you around Hanukkah, but happy Hanukkah. It was like the fun thing he said to him. He knows it's, it's, and by the way, there's some Hanukkah in July sales coming up, so shut up. <laughs> hey, pizza boy. boy. Yeah, hey, pizza boy. <laughs> Neander Jew and the pizza shot boy. shot <laughs> I love the New Jerseys we got to get. Andrew Jew and the Pizza Boy. And Brett just looked at his watch like, I got time here. <laughs> Whoa. And during the next commercial break, I'm going to find that guy. Shoot me over your address. And then, of course, it's an Italian. Last night during the Bucks game, another trailer for the Saints of oh, uh, yeah. uh, the, the Sopranos. Not the same one we watched. Young Sopranos. Oh, yeah, I missed one. it. Oh. I don't know what Leota's role is. I think he's uh, the <clears throat> father. Sure. I think it's I think he's, Johnny. I think that's Johnny. I have a because he's telling everybody to leave him alone. But Which would man, sound oh like man, what? the Saints of New Jersey or whatever the hell that thing's called. The many the, Saints of Newark. Newark. Oh my lord, the the Sopranos the prequel. Many or many, many. Hopkins texted me last night after the game and he said, uh, you see "The or, Sopranos fan, this and that." Uh, said, "Did you see the preview?" And I'm like, "I did." I, I don't think I've looked forward uh, to to anything more. I don't remember. Can we play this. Oh, I 
We were watching it off the air, I think. This is, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Antonio Soprano. I wonder if I can talk to you alone for a moment, Mrs. Soprano. He's On the genius. basis of the Sanford Binet, he's high IQ. You can't prove it by me. He's got a D plus average. Vera Farmiga is the mom. He doesn't apply himself, he but he like is it. smart. The results tell us he's a leader. Damn right. Oh, I'm excited about this. So, yeah, we were talking about last night, and I said I've looked forward to – I don't think I've looked forward to anything more than that for a long time. Like, I want this to happen. And then Doug says, uh, more than a son's championship? And I had to think about it. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Because <laughs> the Suns will play again next year. The Sopranos movies, this is a one-off. Yeah. It's the only thing I cannot wait. No, Ray Liotta is not, uh, is not Johnny He's Boy. not. No. And he Dan doesn't L- say his name. It doesn't say who he is in the movie, but uh, uh, John Bernthal? I oh, guess that's Johnny no Boy. Idea who that is. Yeah. The uh, playing Tony Soprano was Tony Soprano's son in real life. It's James yeah. Gandolfini's real kid. Yeah, Michael. And he had to audition for the role. You don't. Just, it's like kind of crazy. It's like you don't just give him the role, but he's Gandolfini. I, I guess, I, yeah, he's a, but can he act? That's but, true. You know, they're like it's Gandolfini's son, and Man, that's uh, him too. Wow. And it, it's it's crazy. Wow. Like he moves like him, he looks like him, and is that it, Sal? It, what's that? Was Sal uh, in it? Just Sal has to be. In it. It's unreal. I mean, it is. It's. Uh, I have not been excited about a movie or uh, like anything for a long time. I mean, last I honestly, I don't think I've been excited about a movie, and it's been about seven years. Like something will come along, and you're like, "Hey, that was good," or someone will tell you, "It was like I haven't had a movie that that I'm waiting for." Better Call Saul gets me, Breaking Bad got me, The Sopranos yeah. obviously years ago got me. This is the first thing I've looked Grown forward to. Oh, it was Ray oh, the Gups, <laughs> Gups too was an unbelievable <laughs> event. But he went to the premiere to watch that nightmare. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, this is the first thing that gotten me bubbly. Like I'm like this, when, oh it's so I'm. Amped up thinking about it. This may be the first one that brings me back to the actual movie theaters because I'm gonna I'm gonna go to. Big yeah. You're going to the theater this. for this yeah, one? Yeah, absolutely. See, I'm so used to The Sopranos being on my TV. Ah, I don't necessarily. Need I'm going. To, I'm, I'm going Cine Capri. I'm going big. big you time. listen to those Pecker Woods chewing with their mouth open the whole time. <laughs> those, it's gonna ruin it for you. Kill him, Tony. Come on now. <laughs> no, Tony, kill him. Shut your mouth, Pecker Wood. John. Berntal, that might be a good call. Says John Bernthal was the Punisher in the series. Not, not not the comic book, oh, the, but the, his name was the Punisher in in, in that, the Sopranos in that realm. Yeah, that's what huh. the guy in the movie. Yeah, and what's coming up? Yep, I don't know who the Punisher is. I didn't know there were superheroes in Sopranos. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember that one. Just well, I mean, you know what? Shut up, Toledo. Just don't need that. I mean, here's the cast. Look at this. Oh, it's, I'm just I'm jacked up. Joey Diaz is in it. He's got to be big. No, he's way too old for that. Who's Joey Diaz in this thing? And they don't give that. They don't give his he, character or Leotis. He just oh, performs in it as a comedian. Who plays Pauly? Uh, Billy Magnus. Oh, Billy Magnus. He's been in. Uh, oh crap! Can't remember the movie he was in. He's good. Uh, damn it! I just watched something with that guy in it. I think it was a TV show. Though. There's Junior. Junior, yeah. Okay. There's yeah, still. Getting, I'm getting amped up looking at this. Yeah, the preview came on last night during the Bucks and Hawks game, and we'd watched the one on the internet yesterday. Yeah. And uh, then the Bucks Hawks commercial came out. Like, oh, oh. Junior, Junior's the bad guy in the Ant Ant Man and Ant Man and Wasp movies. Oh yeah. When is it out? Uh, I think I October second. Ah. I think. I didn't see Let's the see date. Here. That's too long. I might not live that long. See, I ain't gonna hang on. Paul Sir and I talked October first. Paul Sir and I were talking about that the other day, and he goes, uh, "And Paul is a very cut and dry type individual. If you, yeah. I don't care." About this life at all. <laughs> Not even a little bit. If I had the courage, I'd end it. But I just want to f- be alive to know how Better Call Saul ends. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I f- care about. Just to, to know that the whole Breaking Bad saga ties to uh, Better Call Saul properly is the only reason he's staying alive. And there's moments like this where I'm like, now nah, i got to live to October for sure. Like I can't have any accidents. I can't jump off a building. I can't do anything stupid until after October. Because after that, I don't know that I'm looking forward to much else. No saran wrap. <laughs> I mean, no. I got season tickets to the Suns. But if they choke out in the next two games, 
you know, I'm going to be disappointed going, but I'll be excited, but it's like, oh, no, they're the choke artists. And you got to wait until next June to see if they can pull this off again. And the deeper you go in the playoffs in a late season, the harder it's going to be to be good next year. So, yeah, this is really the one shining example of life that I have to look to. Otherwise, I don't care about anything. <laughs> COVID masks, that's killed me. That's killed my spirit. It's killed my will to live and go on any further with society. I don't want to go to a movie theater, listen to Pecker Woods and black people chatting and eating. I want to watch it at my house, but it is kind of more. I want to go to. I want to go see center. it with Big Pee Pee. I mean, that dude, Big he'll, he'll be yelling at people. Close your me. goddamn mouth. Shut your mouth, Pecker Woods. <laughs> I can't hear little Tony. Hey, pizza boy, tell your people to be quiet. <laughs> I want to go to that uh, premiere. I want to. I want to. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make the offer right now to the uh, what is that thing called? The Italian Society of Americans over on 12th Street in Maryland. Yeah, the uh, uh, Christopher American Columbus Club. 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 I'm going to put up. I'm going to put the Christopher <laughs> Columbus Club. That's it. That's what we're going to call it from now on. Statue, thanks, thanks, thanks Peckerwood. There. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, Peckerwood, the end of you. <laughs> Don't mess around with the Italian American Club. I'll go over there. I'll put up a sign up sheet. I'll take, I'll rent a theater, and we'll take them, and we'll oh. watch with nothing but Italian. Oh, it'd be great. Oh. Let's do it. Oh. 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 Hey, let's get situated over here. Dan Harkin's on the phone. It was really nice of that Jew kid to buy us the present. And, uh, <laughs> I'll check this out. Here. Now let's get all ready to go for The Sopranos. As you say, oh, good you <laughs> go. They got, they got comparisons of uh, the original size. characters. I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Thicky Moltisanti. There's Livia. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, it's a, it's pretty well done. And she looks like she could, yeah. yeah. She could age into that. Yeah. She could morph into that. There's Johnny Boy. Uncle June. Okay. I can't stop it. Got to quit looking. solid. I'm the boss of this family. Uncle June. Oh, my so God. So the Punisher guy is Polly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. That, that's the Punisher guy. I believe so. Yeah. That'll work. Stop looking. I'm too amped oh, up and still- that's all we'll talk about. Uh, except he's he's balding because well, Sil's wearing a toupee. Yeah. Sil has a terrible wig oh, on. Wreck it! <laughs> Come on, you knew that. I mean, part of it was a terrible wig. That's actually great casting to say this was pre. Enough of this. this. Is when he was Brady and he thought he still had hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, I'm 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 Ray Liotta. As that, we don't I, know yet. Honestly, I haven't been this excited. And then Hopkins told me he goes worst ending in TV history, and I said ah oh, disagree. <laughs> disagree too. You get me in on that all day yeah. long. Tony says in the boat with Bobby, I, I think you just go black. And when you die, you just go black. They tell us, like two episodes prior, when you die, I think it all just goes black. And, and how can it. you end it, too? It's, that was one of those movies, like, it's too easy if they just show him getting blown away. Right. It's too easy if he just walks away. It's, he told you right. two episodes prior, when you die, you just go black and that's it. And then they just go black and that's it. <laughs> the, the, they, it's no secret that that's how it ended. Now, it, I got worried that- It was that, pretty solid. Oh, it was amazing. I watch it. Everybody lost their minds. And even the next day, I was sitting there going, I'm not sure what I what watched. Happened? What happened? What happened? And then as you age it, you're like, brilliant. Watch it again. He and, he and Bobby have the conversation when they're talking about dying and heaven and all that. And he says, I think you just die. You just go. Just do, lights out, and that's it. And that's it. And that's how the show ends. And you're like, he told you. It's foreshadowing. It's beautiful. But when it happens, you're just so into the moment. Because I, I remember I was about to call DirecTV up and ream somebody. And everybody, and yeah. yeah. I'm like, are you out of your goddamn mind? You messing with the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> this ends today. Who <laughs> else? And I remember after it, you, me, and Larry were oh, on a, on a we, conference call talking no, about it. I was it. angry. Yeah. I'm like, this sucks. This sucks. And then I'm like, wait a second. Calm down. It doesn't suck. Count to 10. Because it, you know why? It built you up with that Journey song going. You're like, what is going to happen? Yeah. We've got like a minute left. we got like a minute left of show. And then it just turns off. Oh, it's brilliant. Anything that makes you talk that much or be that involved must be great. And this year, many years later, even, yeah. it still gets oh. brought up, that ending. I'm, and actually, I actually said this, uh, you know, this is an awkward thing to say, but I told Doug and he just texted back, wow. I'm like, well, yeah, yeah. Maybe too far. I'm kind of glad Gandolfini went early because then they couldn't start messing around with like rewriting that because they started talking like about doing it. a prequel. Well, and no, all that and or... after like they went into witness oh, relocation yeah. and he didn't get killed and it opens the door to those. Will they re up it with his son again? Another one later? I don't know because I mean this is just a movie. It's not. A, it's not a series. I hope not. I hope this movie stands by itself and 
bumps us right into the Sopranos. I think I David Chase. Is, I think David Chase would do that. Brady, much like your people with Jesus. Yeah, we don't care about the teen years or the early twenties. They're missing for a reason. Boring, and it's just Jesus whacking off the whole time. They don't include that in the book. I don't need Tony Soprano's uh, everyday goings on as he's aging in. I liked him when he was in the mafia and like starting to lead. That was what the whole thing about gaining control. As a kid, he got nothing. He'd just be like a uh, like a gang thug. I and just hope see- it's. I just oh. hope it's going to be better than El Camino because I doubt it was good, but it just didn't it, it didn't okay. fill the void. Yeah. No, you're right. you know it was but just again, it was filler. Yeah, I thought it was that's filler. That's the crappy part to me about ever doing another Sopranos post Tony's death is that you'll end up with an El Camino. Yeah, that just feels like you're just trying to do a little nostalgia run. Yeah. I thought El Camino was a good episode yeah. of Breaking Bad. That's good about episode, as yeah. that's about all. It but was. to me, it was filler. It wasn't. You didn't you know, need to know what no. happened to Jesse. You didn't need that closure. Just imagine that he's drifting around in the world like he always is. Character was a drift to begin with. Did he put it together? He's the only one who lived. Did he? You don't need to know what happens to Jesse. See, I'm one of the few that um, when you brought up the thing about Jesus, I think that there's enough information that someone could roll with something between the 21 and 25 age of For Christ, Christ you do? when he's just balling and clubbing. And oh, yeah. Because and <laughs> well, he got serious. That's right. Making tables and chairs. So you think he had like, he was a little bit uh, off. Maybe he had a know. little bit of a rum springer. Yeah, he went nuts. He banged that hooker pal of his a yeah. couple years. She ghosts him. Girl, no idea what's I going on. I can't do this. I think I got to get serious about life now. What do I want to do? I think I want to walk on water and be a savior or something. And mom's like, oh, geez. 27, maybe 27, because that's when they say is a, you, <laughs> that's when you the step next it up. stage. Yeah. That you become an adult. Yep. Stop doing all that nonsense. For a, me- for a man. For a man. <laughs> Have you read that? 27 is when we start playing for real? Yeah. No kidding? Yeah, that's a one of the uh, epiphany ages. We're like, yeah. all right, I got to start getting a little serious. Yeah, I can't be an idiot anymore. Well, that's good. And 28, you're real. And then like 33 is the one where you're like, ah. Uh, I gotta leave it all behind. Might be playing a little catch up because yeah. you got a little uh, eye opening at the class yeah. reunion. The oh, is that, that it? Are rolling around <laughs> with making the <laughs> six yeah. figures of BMW. Yeah. You're still a. Uh, what am I doing? You're still going to clubs in Scottsdale. I'm a ski instructor. Yeah. <laughs> I do scuba instruction in the summer and then just kind of drift around in the wintertime waiting for the next flight out. Now that's oh. like 40. I started my own Maybe company. And, a little uh, bit. That's why I don't go to the reunions. You don't want to meet that guy. I got an email from a guy who went to high school, started some T-shirt company, made like millions of dollars, like he was 26. Like, no kidding. You were kind of a dummy like me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, man. <laughs> we both knew we were stupid. We're like, we're dumb. We got we to gotta scam the system somehow and find the only thing we're going to. He was, he was good at making T-shirts. Crushed it. Oh, I am yeah, I'm pumped up about Sopranos though. I cannot wait for that. And it's gonna just reignite the whole series and oh. You might have to watch it before too, because there'll be little references back to you know oh, yeah. all the people. It's time that for are, a rewatch. Yeah, I don't know if uh, uh Johnny Cakes will be referenced because they didn't know him yet, but are they and Vito that's the might other, have been around though. Vito will be around. Yeah, should have been. Yeah, and they might have Vito blowing a guy in oh, like man. The, so <laughs> his first Vito's yeah, <laughs> Vito dabbling on a tip for the first time. I don't know if I should be doing it. First scenes with a bomb pop. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be great if Vito's always eating like a cylindrical object. And they show Johnny Cake. I wonder if Johnny I wonder Cakes. if the show's going to be twenty twenty one or if it's going to be. No, I think it's back in the. No, 60s no, no. no I'm it. saying, oh. like, are they going to be t- by today's standards? Because oh, if you watch woke, the Sopranos, a little woke, a little more woke. The Sopranos held no punches. N words, yeah. homo F words. I don't think so. I don't think David Chase would let that happen. I don't think he would do it if that was the case. Oh, That's just me. He but probably won't have it in there. You have, have to, to have it in there. That was that was crucial to the character to have him be bigoted towards other races because that built his Italianism. Yeah, but that's what everybody the, uh, said. Like the problem put it on is, the old man. But no, they won't. But you can't have it. The old man would would drop it down. And as the show went on, we knew that's what Tony was. So it had to start then. Yeah. So you can't have that now. Because, he was raised that way because Johnny Boy was talking that. But stuff the Italian American people get mad. That, you know, this is a stereotype of our lives and that we're not all like this. I mean, nobody's saying you're all like this. Saying this movie is it's we're not all monsters. I know. But you get those groups that woke everything. So I wonder if they'll woke the Sopranos. That would be the first time I thought of that since this all started. Don't like, wreck it. I know. I'm already thinking about it. I think I might have ruined it. If they do something stupid where they, like, keep it safe or 
There's no like I don't uh, think they would bigotry. The bigotry was awesome both directions. Oh yeah, like because the people that would fight back always had a great line. Mm-hmm. Always, it was great. It'll be a, gen- a gentle whisper. I'm saying he's just no, light no. in the loafers. Yeah, it would not. yeah, yeah, maybe, but they wouldn't say light in the loafers. That's, that's against character. That's, that's what I'm saying. Ruin. That's against yeah. character. I believe the word was fajoul <laughs> that they used. I had to look it up. I had to Google search some of the stuff. I'm like, oh, what was the one that Polly called Vito? Uh, oh, uh, oh, maybe you're a flambe. Flambe. Yeah, flambe. he called him that. And, maybe uh, you're a flambe. Oh, the man's got a wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to eat. <laughs> oh, I love me some Sopranos. But that, that trailer came on last night, and I just didn't care about anything for about 20 minutes. Just looking up stuff. And Gandolfini's kid had to audition for the role, and you're reading about that and the whole process. They're like, he can do it. They were actually kind of against it for a little bit. Like, I'm not sure because then it becomes this nostalgia run. Does he... You know, is it too close? And yeah. then, and then he won't be good at it. And it'll look, it'll look like a, a grab. They had to make sure he could act. But man, oh man, evidently. And David Chase, you're right. Wouldn't allow. Yeah, I don't think uh, so. Just the the nepotism to take over over the ability. Oh, I think he'd walk away from it before he would do yeah. something like that. God, I love that show. Oh, and I still like to this day. I do, especially since Brett's been around more often. So every time I think of something, I'm like, oh, I'm eating here. <laughs> So much food eaten. In I don't that think series. I. Oh, every every single episode, somebody's chowing down. Tony mostly. Well, they were talking. Oh. They, I went down that podcast that I was listening to. They were talking to Bobby, and he was like, "Well, when I first got on the show, they had me in a fat suit and everything else." He goes, two seasons in, I was out of the fat suit. Yeah, that was just me." <laughs> they had food. <laughs> 60 yeah. pounds yeah. for Tony. Yeah. Right? And Gandolfini even said when they were telling him they were worried about his health, he's like, "I don't see the character of Tony Soprano becoming a smaller man ever." Like, as time goes, he gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, anyway, I'm half a heart on talking about that. It's only a couple more months. I say that at home. I'm going to bosh you this family. Just for no reason. I say it to the dogs. <laughs> you need to get out of here for a second. I got to talk to you for a little bit. Get over here, Jack. You're crapping all over the floor. I don't need your kind around here, Jack. You know, black dog walking around my white dog. <laughs> John, uh, my focus on that is, have you ever noticed that the hand grenade is missing from the cabinet when Carmella opens it? No. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, when she she, she opened up that, that pillar. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the, the pillar had, had the AK-47 weapons, and everything yeah. else in there. Yeah. Uh, I never noticed that either, actually. There's a hand grenade in it, and then there wasn't? Was that next to where she kept the dog food money? Mm, no. No, was no that the, was just where the weapons were stored. Like, yeah. Anyway. Entrance of the house, just the side yeah. of the formal Yeah, like one of those pillars, room. yeah. Oh. <clears throat> <It's okay. laughs> I never noticed the hand grenade thing. Not too much, I, I wonder if his sister is going to be in it, too. She's got to be. Oh, she's got to be. Oh, you're talking about my sister, <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> oh, Janice? Yes. Oh, she's in it. Oh, yeah. she's got to be in it. Janice I'm reminds me of my sister. have her up in that cast. <laughs> That's the thing about Janice. If I could tell you anything about my sister, people like, because Kevin Rice, meet the sister you're someday. I'm like, no, you don't. You don't, even, you don't ever need to put yourself through that. But I got to meet her because Janice and my sister are the same, which makes me Tony. And, and the <laughs> darkness can't come fast enough. <laughs> Every time I'm in a restaurant, I'm like, oh, that guy comes out of the bathroom and shoots me. <laughs> I play Journey in bathrooms, just try to spark the idea. <laughs> just take me out of this. My sister is Janice. That episode where she's in the basement looking. Oh. All right, that's enough. Enough Sopranos oh, go because so I could go good. on and on and on. Anyway, that comes out in October. So they're going to stay alive through the World Series. That's basically what we're looking for. Just don't – no missteps till October. Then I can go back to my freewheel and walk around on the freeway days. <laughs> Three months from tomorrow. <laughs> then I can walk around uh, looking at ropes and stuff at the Home Depot and say, yeah, hey, that's not – that's a good one. That's taut. Three months from tomorrow. Three months from tomorrow. Okay, I got Fury Wilder coming up in July. That's a good one. Uh, football season will get going. We'll see where that goes. That might keep me around until February. You already got your exercise bands. Yeah. Huh? The exercise – Stretching bands. Oh, I got loads of those. Why, well, you need one? Oh, that's... Uh... Oh, for killing myself. Yeah. I'm not going to do that, Brady. I'm saying I, I look like wandering around on the streets and stuff. Like, I, I just have to be careful. What I'm saying is I have to kind of bubble wrap life for a little while. Not, I'm not that I'm suicidal, that I'm going <laughs> to bubble, bubble wrap life for a little bit. I can't... Like Paul okay, said. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. I can't... I mean, I'd do it if I had the yeah. guts. I mean, what, what are we waiting for? But seriously, uh, like what Paul said, you just got to be careful to the next thing you're looking forward to. And that's the next thing I'm looking forward to. So I can't, you know, 
We can't do the mountain biking on the side, you know, that cliff. Yeah. That special trail. Yeah, I'm not doing any. I'm not going. I'm not going to do anything. People are like this is really dangerous. I'm like, no, nah, sprains are coming out in October. We'll do it in November. <laughs> I probably won't. Hot do air much. balloon ride. Not doing any of that. <laughs> Got to stay alive through the Sopranos. And then take me up in that thing. I don't care what we do after that. Take your chances after the thing you like. Just tell Josh and the boys to ride. I'm not riding until yeah. October second. <laughs> I'll ride. That's it. I'll ride October two. <laughs> after that, extreme ride. Yeah, everything October second. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have. GoPros, and I'll be riding backwards on the handlebars. But right now, I'm bubble wrapped. Safe trails only. Bubble wrapped till the Sopranos. I identify as a bubble wrapped Korean. <laughs> That's me. A guy who's, I, I identify as a jellyfish right now. I'm very, very, very easily poked and killed. Don't do it. Uh, what's on the big board of musical treats? October no. 2nd. Let's just go to sleep and get to it. Yeah, what no do you kidding. say? Best of till October 2. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Wake Up Song brought to you by our buddies that we just talked about over at Action Ride Shop. Get the trails boys. this weekend. Can't hit the trails this weekend. Yeah. Too hot, too scary. A Sopranos October 2. <laughs> but if you're going to hit the trails in the meantime, uh, make sure you hit up our boys over there. They're going to hook you up with uh, all the accessories, the bikes, and, of course, the maintenance on your bikes. That That, that, that is necessary. Part. Most yeah. people, you know, exclude it. They're like, it's just a bike. No, you got to get those things looked at. So Action Ride Shop on Facebook as well as on uh Instagram. Uh, suicidal tendencies on the list. Not from me, actually. Uh, Slipknot. A lot of stuff coming that's, in for that's the one. A lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff coming in for uh, the the masks again. F Authority from Pennywise. Uh, Terror. Defiant. Calling the herd. That's the one. Calling the herd. Um, and then today we just uh, pull the plug from Death. Uh, and then today uh, is Phil and Samuel's birthday. Oh wow! All so right. we'll we got a that. We got down there. Stone the crow. Hmm. Um, I never heard that one. Yeah, goods. Yeah, all right. Yeah, let's I like do that. that. Yeah. We'll do. Stone and it's weird because I'm wearing this. Sh- I'm wearing the down shirt too. I didn't even. You didn't even. Know. I didn't realize it until I came you. in today. Yeah, that's uh, some sort of fate there, Brett. <laughs> I think you got. It the, just goes uh, black. I think you got the ghost of Phil inside you. You got another man in you, Flambe. <laughs> all right, yeah, let's do that. Down, uh, stone the crow. Kevin Leach says, how about you and the uh, – <laughs> it's pretty funny. says, uh, how about you and the hairball stop waxing nostalgic about the Sopranos and get back to the hilarious? Oh, how about you shove this it up, guy? Your... How about that, <laughs> huh, Kevin? Oh, oh. Waxing. This, this is upcoming. This guy. Just added two points. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got two points on your bill, Kevin. <laughs> you made the list, buddy. You're on it. Oh, man. Yeah, there's not a whole lot going on other than that. I mean, we got the Suns tonight. I am looking forward to a Suns championship. That is, that is something we got to look forward to tonight. And uh, we said it last time. I thought they'd close it last time. They looked terrible tonight. We learn whether the young team learned its lesson uh, by not being able to close out a, a Clipper team that has uh, definitely got its back against the, the ropes, or is this Suns team have a weakness that it can't throw that last big punch? That's you know, there's a lot of fighters in the boxing world. That have the ability to work you and stymie you, but they can't finish. And then after they get a little tired, you get worked. I mean, when you can't finish which, a guy, which happens he'll beat on the, you. a lot of times in the first experience, your first right, run. Right, your first those. run through. Yeah. You, very rarely you go up 3 1 in a first run experience, but a lot of times you get into that closeout game, you just don't know what you're doing. Yep. And so, and it's the, all Clipper, new the territory. Clippers have some guys who have been, I don't think they've been, I mean, we have Tory Craig's been to the finals, but outside of that, they're a little more weathered. Uh, Jay Crowder. Crowder is probably one that can tell you because he's been to the finals. But, but, I mean, yeah, it seems like the Clippers are more have a little more of an edge. I, they just that. don't have any heart. They're ice cold. They, I don't think they have. Pers- I think they're too dumb to know. They look dumb, like all of them. Like the entire team looks a little bit blank. All right, Peckerwood. Yeah, I don't think that. They, I don't think that there's. I don't think they're sharp. They know how to work the refs. Yeah, I just think that they're uh, kind of blank to everything. They don't have like human feelings or they're ice cold. So, you know, there's been plenty. I mean, uh, Foreman Ali is one of the greatest fights of all time, the Rumble in the Jungle. And basically what it was was, you're not putting me out. I will fight till I die on my feet. And the next thing you know, George Foreman's tired. Yep. A couple knocks. And if there's ever a fight that a guy was getting his ass handed to him, if it the equivalent of 3-1, it was Ali. Is he that was where getting the, That's killed. where the rope-a-dope came That was from, a right? rope-a-dope. The rope-a-dope was because Ali leaned on those ropes were yep. really loose. And he's like, he can punch me in the arms. And, and it, you know, broke up every rib in his body. And, and mentally, and the nation of 
Oh, Africa oh, was behind Ali. The continent, Brady. The continent. The, the yeah. Zaire. Was the Zaire. The place, yeah. That's right. But the, uh, the nation of Islam was the behind nation of, It was a yes. little of that, too. <laughs> that, too. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, you know, the, the mental game, when George Foreman said the worst moment of the fight was when I thought, I can't finish him. And he said, is that all you got, George? And he said, in my head, I thought, yeah, that's it. I, if this is if this isn't going to put you away, nothing as I've got, and it's getting le- and he went down. So the Suns are in that heavyweight fight where you got to you got to be able to throw that late round haymaker. Ah, it's exciting. Got a lot good going on right now. And happy uh, birthday to Phil. How old is he now? Fifty two. Fifty two. Fifty three. I have. oh oh, I said fifty two. Fifty two and a half. Today. Yeah, it's whatever. Just, it's also Mike. Tyson's just said on Wikipedia. Birthday. Mike I don't know. Tyson's fifty five. Yeah. Big Mike Tyson's fifty five. I know that. And your, Our guy, friend, and your guy Michael Phelps is uh, thirty six. Phelps. Phelps. Oh, Michael Phillips? Phelps. Phelps. Michael Phelps. <laughs> okay. Uh, Phelps and, Dodge. And also our friend uh, Jim Wilson. The Asian Dragon? The Asian Dragon. Dragon's birthday today. He's got to be... He's my age. 49. And he Korean. identifies as Korean, too. Yeah. He should be in a BTK band. Light Jim up like dynamite. You were right, man. We should do this thing. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat, ericsfamilybbq.com.